Hi guys, I'm just going to let uh, just open the room, just let some um, some of the attendees make their way in. Uh, just bear with me a few seconds, and we'll get this underway. Okay, look, good morning, afternoon or evening from wherever you're joining us in the world. As usual, on behalf of me and the, and the FP Markets team, thank you for taking the time to be here. By way of a brief introduction, my name's Aaron Hill and I'm the technical analyst for FP Markets. Um, I've been involved in the financial markets for you know, around more than 12 years now. Um, I've also completed the CMT, uh, the CMT course, the charter, and on the back of that received the CFTE qualification um, in 2020. So um, in terms of my trading, I, I tend to look at price action. I'm a big, big, big fan of price action and um, the relative strength index, the RSI, I also do take into account. And um, also the uh, psychological uh, psych the psychology of charts, if that makes sense. So I look for where the orders are placed and uh, and try to work that way. Now, look, by attending today, you will hopefully leave with a more thorough understanding of currency pairs and you know how to accurately size your positions. And look, if you wish, ultimately never have to rely on on the um, on the on a broker's position size calculator ever again, if you so wish, of course. Uh, all you need is some willingness uh, to learn and a basic calculator. Uh, the one freely available on Windows is absolutely fine. Now, look, so before, before I proceed, can I just check that I'm coming across loud and clear and the welcome slide is visible? If not, do let me know in the chat box. Uh, um, do let me know so I can um, check if the rest of the attendees are having the same issues. Um, I see the chat box is, uh, is completely empty, so um, I assume we can all hear me and uh, everything's running as it should. So as for a recording of this webinar, I do get a lot of emails regarding the recordings of these presentations. Look, the recordings are, present, uh, are um, available on the FP Markets uh, website, and they're also, also available through our, our YouTube channel. So as you can see in the chat box, the links are there available for you to, um, to, to uh, click and uh, you, can see, you can access all of our um, previous, our archived webinars. Now look, this is a brief disclaimer, guys. <clears throat> Derivatives, derivative products are highly leveraged, carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. Uh, features of our products, including fees and charges, are outlined in the relative legal documents available on our website. Now, I'm not going to read through all of the um, parts about the legal documents, but you get the um, idea. So with that being said, what's on the menu tonight? So uh, tonight, yes, for me. <laughs> Look, so first on the menu is to learn the definition of a currency pair. So what is a currency pair? And this will actually blend very nicely with the second point in our presentation, understanding what a base and a term currency is. So this forms the framework for a currency pair. And then following an understanding of a currency pair's construction, we'll then deep dive into position sizing. Um, uh, uh, all, the, all the position sizing formulas you need for everyday trading. Look, the, the actual formulas are very straightforward. Um, it just can get a, a little bit tricky once you try to um, really dive into this, um, into position sizing. So for me, I would always try and try and look to keep things simple. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll walk away a more informed trader. Uh, well, then, as you can see, round things off for a Q&A. Look, if you do have questions during the presentation, fine, ask me and um, I'll see if I can clear it up on the slide we're working with. If not, or if you're unclear of anything or anything um, needs to be, you feel that needs further clarification, please go ahead and email me and the, uh, the research team at uh, market analyst at fpmarkets.com um, or alternatively look support uh, team at fpmarkets.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Also, look guys, if you have a topic you wish us to cover in future presentations, 
you know, send across your ideas and we'll look at creating something for you. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get let's get this thing rolling. So look, the Forex market, as I'm sure you're all aware, really operates through currency pairs that provide exchange rates. An exchange rate presents the value of one currency, uh, sorry, um, an exchange rate presents the value of one um, country's currency in terms of another country's currency. Very simple. This is the rate of exchange between two currencies, hence the term currency pair. In each currency pair, irrespective of the currencies involved, a base currency is present and the term currency is also present. And this is really what forms the currency pair. Um, the base currency is found always, should I say, always found on the left-hand side. In this case, it's the euro. And a term currency is always found on the right-hand side. Now, just to be clear, a term currency is sometimes referred to as uh, either a quote currency, a secondary currency, or even a um, counter currency. But for the sake of today's presentation, let's stick with the term uh, with the term term currency, and uh, you'll see why shortly. Um, okay, I'm seeing a few questions. <laughs> I want. I'm just going to read the question out. I want us to cover Fibonacci. Look, Sahid, uh, the <laughs> this is <laughs> this is a presentation on position sizing, not Fibonacci. We do have Fibonacci webinars. Um, if the support team will be so kind as to place the links in the chat box for you, we do have webinars on Fibonacci, which you can uh, you, you can review in your own time. But this is a presentation on position sizing. I can't really go off and talk about uh, Fibonacci or the next question, volatility, boom and crash. I can't really talk about that in a position sizing webinar. I do apologize, Sahid. So moving on, as you can see, look, the uh, the euro dollar trades at um, currently trades in this example at one point two or one dollar and twenty cents. And just to keep things as accurately as accurate as possible. Um, do note that some brokers price their currency pairs to the um, to the fourth. Let me just write this up so we all know where we are to the. Uh, fourth decimal place, as you can see here, this value here. So some 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 brokers you will not see the fifth decimal place, but in turn for FP markets we we price our currency pairs to the fifth decimal place. So this is the value you would see, uh, obviously not this value, but a value similar if you were trading the euro dollar. So you would see five uh, values. Um, so look, the base currency in this case is. Euro and it's always uh, uh, it always denotes one unit, so always one euro or uh, or two euros or three euros. Um, it's, it's it's always it's never um, in decimal form really. So just think of the base currency as always as uh, one um, unit. Okay. Um, with that being said, to um, the so in, in terms of this currency, this uh, uh, value here, this means to purchase one euro, it'll cost $1.20. Look, I sh I'm sure you guys already know this. I just want to ensure that we're all on the same page for any newer traders that are present. So what I'm hoping you see from here is that an exchange rate informs how much um, dollar per euro. Or we could simply think, we could think of this more, <clears throat> more simply as, euro in terms of dollar, hence the uh, phrase or, or, or word term currency. So euro in terms of dollar, hence why we say term currency. Many of us do say term currency. So look, when buying or selling a currency pair, the currency pair actually traded is the euro. In this case, it's always the base currency, okay? Um, this is always the case, no ifs, no buts. So if using the euro dollar currency pair as the example, you buy the base currency, the euro, and sell the um, term currency, the dollar. Um, conversely, selling a currency, selling a currency pair, you would sell the base currency and buy the dollar. Pretty simple stuff. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions. Fantastic.
So I assume we're all clear up to this point here, which is great. Okay, this is an interesting one. So look, and this should really um, help solidify our understanding so, uh, of the term currency. So look, currency pairs can be quoted in either American or European terms. I'm pretty sure you can guess why. Um, currency pairs quoted in dollars per one unit of another currency, quoted in dollars per unit of another currency, are um, in American terms, okay? So let me just repeat that. Here we can simply say the currency pair is quoted in terms of the dollar for American termed currency pairs. Um, so the so the US dollar, um, in, uh, sorry, the euro in terms of the dollar. Uh, the examples we have here, of course, are the euro dollar and Aussie dollar, but we could also use the pound dollar, the, um, the uh, New Zealand dollar, and uh, 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 currency pairs like that. So um, those that quote a currency aside from the dollar are, are often termed Europeans, okay? So as you can see here, we have two clear examples. We have the dollar yen and the dollar Swiss. Now, just to be clear, European terms are not, not restricted to European-based currencies. Any currency aside from the US dollar can form a European, um, a European uh, currency pair. So what you have here is, um, is, is, um, is so the Japanese yen per one unit of dollar, the Swiss, Swiss franc per one unit of dollar. Okay, so one final note uh, regards to, uh, um, really regards to direct and indirect quotations. You may have heard of, of these before. Um, so look, a direct quotation provides the value of one unit, one unit of foreign currency in equivalent units of the uh, local or you would say home currency. So let's imagine you're a US, I'm a US citizen. Um, and therefore, the euro dollar would be a direct quotation for me if I'm a US citizen, because um, the, the, let me just get the pen out. So my cursor doesn't, okay. So the reason why, so if I'm from the US and um, this would be a direct quotation, okay. So this is this provides the value of one unit of foreign currency. Remember, the base currency is always one unit in terms of my home currency, which is the US dollar. The same here, guys. One unit of foreign currency in terms of my home currency, the US dollar. Now, that's a direct um, quotation, okay? Now... Um, so a, 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 an indirect quotation is simply the inverse of this uh, of uh, the, uh, the direct quotation. So we can have the uh, US dollar, sorry guys, the US dollar against the euro would therefore be a, would therefore be an indirect quotation. And uh, what this does is uh, the value of one unit of local currency, the base currency, one unit of local currency, again, I'm still the US citizen. Um, is provided in terms of an equi equivalent value of, um, of, uh, of foreign currency, okay? And that's the uh, quote currency or term currency or, or whatever you want to uh, label that. I don't really want to spend too much time on this because I just wanted to make sure that we all have a basic understanding. Look, look just to confirm things. So if I wanted to buy 10,000 euros or... Uh, so if I wanted to buy 10,000 euros um, and I was, an, I was an American citizen, I'd ob obviously use the US, euro US dollar, right? Um, exchange rate. And look how much 10,000 euros at this point here, 10,000 euros um, was in terms of the dollar, right? As remember, the term currency values, the term currency here, the second currency list values the base currency. And uh, this is key to remember, guys, the term currency ultimately tells us how much it will cost to purchase the said amount of euros in this case. It's essentially the value of the base currency. Now, look, really quickly, guys, types of currency pairs, major currency pairs, uh, minor currency pairs, and exotic currency pairs. When trading Forex, you do require an understanding of how currency pairs are, are basically organized. 
So we have the majors, as I said, the minors and the exotics. Now, major currency pairs contain the most heavily traded currency pairs. For anyone that's interested, do take a note, do take a look at the Bank for International Settlements, the FX um, OTC turnover, I believe it's called. And you'll see you'll, you'll be able to access a, a vast amounts of information regarding this. So the most heavily traded currencies, you can think of the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, the majors always contain the US dollar guys always contain the US dollar. Then we have minor currency pairs. So um, this is uh, this is sometimes referred to these are also sometimes referred to as cross currency pairs. Uh, and these are the, uh, and the and and these are those that are not involved in the US dollar. So popular popular minor currency pairs are the pound yen, euro dollar, uh, sorry euro pound, uh, pound Japanese yen even, and also the euro Aussie dollar. <clears throat> um, okay, just bear with me. Uh, exotics. Finally, we have the exotic currency pairs, um, the, which, you know, it does include a major currency that's paired alongside less traded currencies and can be um, relatively thin markets, you know, low liquidity um, and low trading volume. Exotic currencies are those that are those typically associated with developing or emerging uh, uh, countries. So common exotics are um, just off the top of my head uh, are the Japanese yen against the, say, the Norwegian krona, um, the JPY uh, against the N NOC, NOC, against the NOC, <laughs> and the New Zealand dollar against the Singaporean dollar, for example. So the NZD against the SGD. Um, right. Okay, position size. And I, I do believe we had a question. How do you know the currency I'm interested in, in is minor dollar pen? How Diego, you've asked me a question. How to know if the currency pair I'm interested in is a minor? The dollar pen. That's not a minor currency pair. That would be a um an exotic currency pair because the Peruvian souls, I'm not uh is 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 an exotic currency pair, I would say. Um, so yes, that's not a minor currency pair. I would say the I've never even looked at that currency pair to be quite honest with you. So I would say that was a a very um, fast moving market, a highly illiquid market. I would say um, I'll have to look more into that to be quite honest. Is that what you're trading right now, Diego? Okay, why why uh, Diego's uh, preparing his reply? <clears throat> Let's um, let's just see. Oh, you're from Peru, yeah, and interested in it. Okay, so look, look for me personally, that would be considered a an exotic currency pair. Um, most definitely an exotic currency pair. So um, it's it's not really what I would consider a minor currency pair. It's more exotic. So it's like the um, your Japanese yen against the NOC, for example, right? That's um, an, <clears throat> an exotic currency pair. Um, so as I said, the, these currency pairs tend to be low liquidity and low trading volume. So um, they can also be uh, relatively thin markets, right, which can generate some really strong movements. Um, and you have to be really well protected for that. Uh, really, re you should really know what you're doing before you trade the exotic currency pairs. <clears throat> so now we have an understanding of the basics of currency pair construction. Uh, we just need to be clear on a few things uh, before we look at position sizing, right? So I feel it's imperative that I point out, I feel it's absolutely imperative that I point out that as traders and investors, while I absolutely love uh, going over charts, finding setups, I absolutely love that. We are risk managers first and foremost, no matter what anyone tells you. Every trade is random. Okay, I know we want our next trade to be winner uh, to be a winner. Um, you know, every trade is random. Now, this trade, your very next trade, may be the best trade of your life, or it could simply be another loss in the many losses you will experience in your trading career. You will learn as you gain experience, though. Uh, although a winning trade can produce a euphoric feeling, uh, trading is not about being right or wrong, ladies and gentlemen. It truly is not. And that took me a long time to realize. 
Um, right. So yes, uh, Diego, I cannot be I cannot, obviously I cannot be one hundred percent sure uh, about that currency pair, but I, I, I I'm willing to uh, bet that it's an exotic currency pair. It's classified as an exotic currency pair. Um, so, but do check that out if you're interested, just to, just to be sure. Um, right. So moving on. Uh, one more thing I, I really I, I think it's important to understand, I know is important to understand, especially when you're your position sizing, is lot sizes, right? So as his name implies, position size refers to the size of a trading position. Now, in the foreign in the foreign exchange market, position position sizing is determined by units or lots. Some brokers allow you to input units um, in MetaTrader 4 and 5. We do not do that. You, you don't, don't have access to that, I don't believe. I think you have to in, input lots. Um, I've not seen one that you can actually input units. Um, if anyone has here, please do let me know because I've never seen it. So this, so the position size measure, measures a trade's transaction size. Establishing the lot size for a trading position is governed by the accounts denomination and the traded currency pair. Now, this is important, guys, because when you um, when you want to manually calculate your position size, you have to make sure you you understand that the 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 calculation depends on your account denomination and the currency pair traded. You will see this soon. Now, common lot sizes, as you can see on the screen here, guys, are the <clears throat> standard lot, which equals 100,000 units of the base currency. Now, the volume here is in terms of MetaTrader 4 and 5. Now, if you want to input 100,000 units, that's one standard lot, that's 1.0. Mini lot, 10,000 units of the base currency. 0.1 is your uh, volume uh, to, to, to input into MT4 or MT5. Micro, 1,000 units, uh, 0.01. But we, there's also a thing called nano lot. Now, for FP markets, just to be clear, we do not offer that, um, but some brokers do. So a nano lot is 100 units of the base currency, and that's 0 0.001. Okay, so um, let's move on. Right, so just, uh, just before we dive in, I just want to take a minute to highlight the components needed to calculate position size. It's all pretty basic, so I will not spend too much time on it. Needless to say, we generally need to follow the four, uh, these four steps. We need to know our account balance, our account risk per trade, the currency pair traded, and the protective stop loss distance measured in pips. So the currency pair traded could be euro dollar, could be pound dollar. Uh, the account risk per trade is the value at risk on each trade. So it could be 2%, 1%. The account balance is obviously the account, the amount deposited. So if we have a 10,000 US dollar account, that's our account balance. Protective stop loss distance measured in pips is I hope we're all, we're, all, we're all aware of what that is. That could be 50 pips. That could be 100 pips. It could be 200 pips. Okay. Right. So here we go. Position sizing number one. So as, as, as the informed currency traders that we are, we want a, reasonably, a reasonable knowledge of position sizing. Now, for our position size, um, for, for, for our first position size example, we'll be using an account denominated. Let me just highlight this. So, an account with me. So, an account denominated in the same currency as the currency pairs term currency. Remember, the term currency is the second currency listed in the um, in the uh, currency pair traded and the uh, base currency is the first currency so it's the an account denominated in the same currency as the currency pair's second currency the term currency right so with that in mind by far this is the most straightforward position size calculation as shown by the form formula here trade risk divided by stop distance okay nothing more than that that is all you need to know to get the exact amount of units you need to input into your trading platform. Uh, right, please keep in mind, this is very, very important. Please keep in mind that one pip in the FX market represents 0 0.00010, okay? Five decimal places, guys. You can ignore that if your broker works with four decimal places, but assuming you, we, all, we all trade with FP markets, uh, 0 0.00010 is one pip. 
for most currency pairs, that is, guys. For, J for Japanese yen-based currency pairs, these are priced to th the third decimal place, 0 0.010, okay? And for some brokers, it's simply this, 0 0.01, okay? Two decimal places. Um, so to demonstrate the position size calculation, let's work through an example I've already prepared. So let's imagine we have a 10,000 US dollar trading account. Okay, and the size of uh, the, 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 this trader is willing to risk 2% equity risk. So 10,000, 2% of 10,000 US dollars is 200 US dollars. This is how much we are going to risk. Uh, the currency pair we are going to trade is the euro dollar. Remember, the account denominated is in the same currency as the currency pairs term currency. So our account, our account is denominated in US dollars, and our currency pair that we're trading is the euro dollar. So the term currency is US dollar. The account is based in US dollars. So it's it's exactly what we're looking for. And for this particular trade, for our hypothetical trade, we're looking to risk 50 pips, okay? The protective stop loss order from entry to protective stop loss order is 50 pips. Now, recognizing the account currency and term currency are identical, US dollar, there is no conversion with other currency uh, currencies necessary for this calculation. The, the reason is if a trader buys or sells um, 200 uh, US dollar of the term currency and buys the euro, we, we, you know, the equivalent, uh, we're, we're going to be buying the equivalent value of the base currency, no matter what we do. If we buy, if we, if we buy the, U, uh, the US dollar for 200 US dollars, we're going to be selling the equivalent, right? So it's pretty self-explanatory. And the base currency is what we're going long or short, right? So Look, to work out our position size for our example here, we quite simply, $200, our $200 is our trade risk, right? Trade risk, trade risk, divided by 50 pips, divided by the stop distance, entry from stop, 0 0.00500, okay? This is our 50 pip stop. And this gives us 40,000 uh, units. Do this on your own calculator, guys, to prove that uh, what, I'm, what I'm showing is correct. And you'll get a nice round 40,000 units of euro. Now, that's fantastic. How do we prepare this to, to be placed in? So look, that is all you'll need. If you're trading this setup here, that is all you'll need. So you could just quickly whip out your calculator and do your calculation without going onto the broker's um, calculator and inputting all your details, 10,000 US dollar trading account, 2%, you could just say 200 divided by 0 0.0050 and away you go. You've got your 40,000 units. So 40,000 units or 0.4 volume in MetaTrader platforms, which is four mini lots. Remember, 40,000 units, 10,000 units per mini lot, four mini lots. Now look, the easy calculation here, I hope you guys can see my calculator. I'm going to bring it on right now. The easy way to do this, <clears throat> the easy way to do this is simply 40,000 divided by 100,000. That will give us, <coughs> excuse me guys, that will give you how many, your, your exact value that you need to input into your, um, into your MT4 or MT5 platform to keep within this risk uh, that you want, the 200 US dollars. 0.4. That's all you do is put 0.4 into your platform in the trading volume and away you go. That's all you have to do. So at this point, I, you know, um, I think it's really important to understand that uh, just how minute the FX markets, the FX market moves are. Uh, did you, look, did you know that 100 pips is, equals, is equal to one pence or one cent if you're looking at US dollars? Now, 1,000 pips is equal to 10 pence. Now, it would take 10,000 pips to equal one pound or one US dollar, for example, 10,000 pips. Okay, so if we think about it, our 50 pip stop here is half, um, half, a, half a cent because we're, we're trading in dollars, right? Half a cent. Now, I'm not from the US, but I'm pretty sure they do not work with currency that small. I know in the UK, we do not work with half a pence. And in Japan, I'm pretty sure they do not work with half a yen, which is 50 sen. In fact, I know they don't. So um, 
I hope this is clear. Let me just check if there's any questions. Um, we have someone here asking for the uh, commodity gold. Look, this is just for currency pairs. Very basic at the moment, uh, Diego. Uh, this is something you can email me on if you really want to understand that. And I'll send you back a detailed email regarding uh, the commodity for position sizing because I've not prepared for that. Uh, I, I apologize. Okay, so let me just... Uh, let me just um, quickly get off the spotlight. Okay. Oh, next one. Okay, so just to really to further our understanding. Um, so now we're going to be working with a Japanese yen-based trading account. Okay. Um, here we have, as you can see, here we have a 500,000 Japanese yen trading account. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> to be quite honest with you, Dago, I've never, ever traded gold in that sense. I've always been a, a straightforward currency trader. So um, I hope uh, I would need some time to uh, uh, show you the calculations. Uh, Idem, I'm I'm, I do hope I've pronounced your name uh, correctly. This is not really clear as it's not straightforward. Look, I, can re I feel your pain. I know it's not really straightforward, but uh, let me take you back to the previous slide. So, and look, if you, if you want to tell me what's not clear or what's not straightforward, that would help me a lot. And I'll take you through it uh, while, we're, while we're on the slide. Hopefully, look, this next um, example might help clear that up for you. So as I said, we're now working with a 500,000 Japanese yen trading account. Now, I don't think this is a lot of money. I think this is around $4,000, I think. I could be wrong here. But um, in terms of Japanese yen, of course. And for this trade, we're, we're risking 2%. So 10,000 Japanese yen, okay? Pretty basic stuff, very basic, in fact. This is our account. This is our risk. This is the pair we're trading. Remember, account denominated in the same currency as the currency pair's term currency. Account denomination, Japanese yen. Currency pair's term currency, Japanese yen. Exactly the same as the previous example, guys. Let me just go back. Account denomination, US dollar. Currency pairs term currency, US dollar. Okay, so, and for this trade, we're working with 30 pips. <clears throat> from entry to risk, for, sorry, from entry to protective stop loss order, this is the amount we are risking. So look, again, just to prove that uh, what I'm saying, go back again to the first example, trade risk divided by stop distance. Let's go back to the next example, trade risk divided by stop distance. Now, trade risk, 10,000 Japanese yen. Our equity risk is 10,000 Japanese yen. Divide this by 30 pips. Remember, we're working with Japanese yen-based currency pairs now, guys. 30 pips, three decimal places. And that will give us the units to trade. 33,000. So do it on the calculator. I'll do it in front of you. Just bear with me. So um, let me just get this. So 10,000 Japanese yen divided by 0 0.300. I hope this is right. There we go. 33,333 units of US dollar because we have to buy the base currency, right? Now, if we want to see how much to input into our MetaTrader terminal, what we do then, remember what I said, divided by 100,000. And that's how much we put in. So 0 0.3, okay? That's how much we put into our rounded down, that is, guys, just to be clear. I would never advise rounding up when you're looking at position size. I would always round down. So uh, in this case, we would round down to 0 0.3, which is three mini lots. Sahid, are, are you sure you're clear? Oh, how did you get? Sorry, I, I missed your question there, Sahid. How did you get 40,000 euros? Are you clear now, um, Sahid? You've said, okay, understood. So uh, let me just go back to that. Sorry, I'm terribly shocked. Sorry, I missed your question there. Um, uh, right, so um, yeah, 40,000 units, so 200 US dollars, our account equity risk divided by the pot, stip, stop loss distance gives us 40,000 units, 40,000 divided by 100,000 gives us 0 0.4, and that's our volume we put in. Okay, so moving on to the next one. This gets a little bit more confusing, So, but look how quick that will take, right? So this is the only... Um, this is the only... Uh, Right, so, so how quick is that to 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 just just to be, bring this back up? How quick is that? How quick can we really calculate our position size? Right, so look, 
10,000 US, uh, 10,000 Japanese yen divided by 0 0.300 our pips. There's our, there's our units. Divide that by 100,000, and there's your uh, input for your MetaTrader terminal. In the time you've calculated this, you've just opened your broker's um, position size calculator, in my opinion, or you've just started inputting your details there. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, next one. So the previous slides ex explain the procedure behind calculating position size in the Forex market with an account denominated in the same currency as the pairs term currency. So the second currency. Now this slide describes position sizing dynamics for an account denomination in a currency identical to the base currency. Remember the base currency, guys? It's the first currency in the currency pair, okay? So the Euro dollar, the pound dollar, the Aussie dollar, the, um, they're all base currencies, okay? So this is an account denominated in the same currency as the base currency. Now, the following values needed to calculate this are the uh, account balance, very similar to what we showed already, the account balance of the trading account, or account size, account risk per trade, currency pairs exchange rate, and the stop loss distance, which you'll see very soon. Now, to calculate the size of a position for an account denominated in an account currency, matching the base currency of the currency pair, this, let me just get the highlighter up, that's much easier. This is the formula we use. Very, very simple, very straightforward. Account equity risk multiplied by the exchange rate you're trading divided by stop distance. That's it. That's all you need. Account equity risk, how much you're risking from your account. This could be $100. This could be $50. This could be $10 multiplied by the exchange rate. Now, why do we... Um, let So, what... So let, let's work through an example. Hopefully this will make it clearer for you. So assume an account of uh, 10,000 US dollars, right? 10,000 US dollars. And this is often stated in account equity, trading capital, or even account, um, yeah, account equity. Uh, the trader is prepared in this case to risk 1%, okay? Which is 100 US dollars. Uh, the, the currency pair of interest here is the dollar Swiss. Remember guys, look what we're looking at, account denominated in a currency identical to the base currency of the currency pair. The account denomination is dollars, the account, uh, the identical to the base currency of the currency pair. Dollar, dollar, the dollar and the US dollar, the base currency, okay? And that's trading at 0.97955. Now, this particular setup demands a 20 pip uh, protective stop. Right, so following the formula, we've got to trust the formulas here, guys. Trust the formulas. We simply, um, here we go, it's here. 100 US dollars, so 100 US dollars. That's our equity risk, right? From our balance, from our account balance, our equity risk is 100, 100, 100 US dollars multiplied by the uh, dollar Swiss exchange rate at 97,955. What this does is this gives us the Swiss franc risk. Then we divide that. So 100 multiplied by 97.5. Let me just do the calculation here so you can all see. Um, 100 multiplied by 0.97955. And 90, that's, so that's 97.955 Swiss franc. That's our risk in Swiss franc. Then we divide that by 20 pips. Okay. And that gives us 48,977.5 units in dollars. Okay, so that's how, much, how many dollars we need to buy. Now, again, guys, if we want to find out how much to put into our MetaTrader platform. Oh, whoops. And there we go. So to round, I would round that up in that case. So 0.49, so 0 0.49, okay? Nearly, nearly five mini lots, nearly 50,000 units, nearly five mini lots. Um, okay, we have a question here from where does the pip value apply? I haven't spoken about pip values yet. Um, I, I don't intend to talk about pip values, to be quite honest with you. Uh, what about currency pairs whose pip value is not a 0 0.0001? Are you talking about the Japanese yen? Um, 
Japanese yen uh, uh, based currency pairs where, where they're priced to this. Nobut, Nubut. I'm sorry. If, I'm so sorry if I've pronounced your name incorrectly. Uh, if you're talking about the Japanese yen currency pairs, we'll, I'm going to show you an example right now. But we did just go over an example of the Japanese yen, uh, an example of that here where the pip value is different. So let's go over another example where we're looking at the um, the this is the using the Japanese yen. OK, so in this case, look, let's look at this example here. We have an account of five thousand Aussie dollars. Our account, again, is 1% equity risk. So we're risking 50 Aussie dollars. And the currency pair we're trading is the Aussie Japanese yen. And, and, and currently, the Aussie Japanese yen trades at 92 at 92.500. This is the current exchange rate, obviously not the current exchange rate, but the exchange rate for the Aussie Japanese yen in this example. And to finally, we, 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 we need to risk 25 pips in our current trade. As we know that, trust the formula up here, guys. Trust the formula. So um, 50 Aussie dollars, that's our account equity risk. 50 Aussie dollars multiplied by 92.50. This gives us our Japanese yen risk. Let me just do that on the calculator. Um, 50 multiplied by 92.500. This gives us 4,625 Japanese yen risk. So this has transferred the Aussie dollar to Japanese yen risk because look, we've just um, we've just uh, uh, 50 Aussie dollars at this point here multiplied by the exchange rate for uh, Aussie Japanese yen. So one Aussie dollar is worth uh, 92.50 Japanese yen, and uh, that gives us 4,625 Japanese yen. We then divide this as we did in the previous example, simply divide that by the stop loss distance, which is um, zero, zero point, whoops, 0 0.250, 18,500 units. And if you uh, just divide that by 100,000, that will give you 0.18 to enter into your system. Obviously, round it down again, guys. Okay, so that's if your account is denominated in a currency identical to the base currency. So look, remember these remember these formulas, guys. Let me just go back. Trade risk stop divided by stop distance for an account denominated in the same currency as the currency pairs term currency. Account denominated in a currency identical to the base currency of the currency pair account equity risk multiplied by exchange rate, divided by stop distance. Again, guys, look, there will be a recording available for this, so please do go over it at your uh, leisure, and then feel free to ask me some, send me any questions you uh, uh, like, and uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll, I can send you back a more detailed reply if needed. And finally, guys, we're going to be working with an account denomination. This is where it may, may get a bit tricky. Account denomination possessing no association with the with the currency pair. So here we have, um, so the first position, uh, the first posi uh, position, uh, the first posi position size slides were dedicated to position size calculation techniques for Forex trading accounts um, in, in, um, <clears throat> in either the currency pairs term currency or base currency. Now the final part, part as I've said, is an account denominated in a currency that possesses no associate. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. No association with the currency pair. Okay, so we will first attempt to tackle a position size calculation for accounts denominated in the same currency as the conversion as the currency pair's conversion base currency using the formula here. So this is the formula we're looking at. This will make sense very soon, I hope. Trade risk, again, trade risk multiplied by the conversion exchange rate divided by the stop distance. So it's always divided by the stop distance, guys. Right, so let's, let's um, so a conversion, a conversion currency pair exchange rate is necessary to accurately express the size of a trader's position, right? So this, as I said, this should be clearer. Let's just get onto an example and this should be a lot clearer. So let's, let's focus on this example here. We have a 10,000 GBP account, a Great British Pounds account, where we are, we've got a, you know, a pretty healthy appetite for risk, and we're, we're risking 3% equity risk here, which is 300 GBP, 
and we're trading the euro uh euro dollar um um Asha, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, look, uh, I'll try to get back to your question as soon as I finish this. No, no worries on that. So yeah, we're trading the euro dollar. Our pip, our stop loss distance is 30 pips, and the pound dollar exchange rate is 1.2544. Okay, you'll know why we need that in a minute. So this is our um, this is our uh, setup. This is our, what we're working with right now. So because currency pairs are valued through their term currencies, uh, and this therefore is the value we see on the chart on our Y axis, uh, the trader is unable to use the euro dollar in this example as the account currency to size their position is not the same as either the uh, base currency or the term currency. Uh, in, uh, 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 it's not the same as their account currency, right? So um, it's important to remember in this example here, we require um, the dollar amount of 300 GBP, our account risk, 300 GBP, as we are trading the euro dollar. Now, this can be achieved by using the pound dollar exchange rate, which for this example trades at 1.2544 which tells us that one GBP is priced at $1.2544. And um, so knowing one, one GBP is worth $1.2544, and the trader wants to understand how much 300 GBP, uh, my account equity risk, we simply 300 uh, multiplied by the uh, exchange rate for the pound dollar, 1.2544. It's up here, guys. 300 GBP multiplied by 1.2544. This gives us 376.32 US dollars. All we do then, guys, is same as before. We divide that by our stop distance, which is 30 pips. And that gives us 125,440 units. Very quite straightforward, this one, um, because there's no, you don't have to invert the currency pair. Right. So again, the actual number. Look, let me just prove this. The actual number in uh, in the we import into our um, one hundred thousand. This is the number we import into our um, our uh, MetaTrader all the window one point two five. Okay, that's uh, one standard lot and you know nearly three mini lots, but just say two mini lots uh, to round down. Okay, the final example is we have a dollar account. Uh, we're risking 1% equity risk or 100 US dollars, and we're trading the pound Aussie dollar. We're risking 50 pips in our setup. And for this, the Aussie dollar is, is trading at 0 0.7202. <laughs> right. So this is the calculation we follow in this case. So this is where it may get a little bit tricky. So we're now, uh, we, we, what we have to do is um, so the, um, the first step. <clears throat> To, is, to calculate the position size involves understanding Aussie dollar risk, right? Because that's our term currency. We need to understand that risk. Um, that is the term currency of the selected currency pair, the pound dollar, Aussie dollar. And this is obvi obviously the price we see on the charts, right? So we must understand that. Uh, for this, we would need the Aussie dollar exchange rate, which currently trades at 0.7202. And, uh, and we use that to get risk in Aussie dollar based on our dollar account, okay? So, um, um, uh, uh, but, you know, this is a very big but. To locate the Aussie dollar risk, the next step involves inverting the Aussie dollar. So um, all we do in this case is, um, is, is, is uh, to, convert, to convert the currency pair to dollar Aussie dollars. Um, we would then simply one divided by the currency pair, 0 0.7202, uh, to reach, I think it's around 1.3885 um, in this example. So what we would do here, let me just write this down because um, I think it's 1.3855. So the uh, US dollar, bear with me, Aussie dollar. So this is all this is, is the inverted uh, currency pair from this. And that comes in at around 
0.85. Okay, so all we do then is to find our 1% um, equity risk, so it's 100, multiplied by this value here to get, and I believe this is, um, so uh, the, it's down here, there we go. Uh, 100, 100 Aussie dollars multiplied by the um, invert. We can do that on a calculator so I can show you. Um, whoops, I have to get rid of the pen. Um, 100. So 100 Aussie, uh, uh, US dollars multiplied by 1.3885. And that gives us 138 Aussie dollars. And then we simply divide that by our, pip, our stop distance, which is 50 pips. And away you go, 27,770 units divided by 100,000 to get our exact 0 0.27 or 0 0.28 if you really wanted to round that up there. And that's all you put into your um, uh, MetaTrader or the window. I know it's a little bit complex, uh, this, this, si this position sizing here. And look, to be honest, most of you will probably result to, uh, result to using a calculator, which is, but I would really encourage you to try and understand this because it would, it really does help understanding the dynamics, in my opinion. Um, so look, let me just try and clear these drawings. Okay, so look, um, just really quickly, uh, there was a question I had to get to. Oh, there was a question that's just disappeared. Okay, so look, um, as always, if there are any specific topics you would like the team here to talk about, please be sure to send in your suggestions to the emails shown here, support team at fpmarkets.com or market analyst at fpmarkets.com. Do we have any questions regarding this? Look, I would really and truly encourage you to watch the recording and just really send in, the que um, send in your questions if you have any. Um, and then I can respond in a more detailed, um, in a more detailed manner with some examples, maybe with some more examples than I've given here. Or if you'd prefer to have the slides, just let me know. Send me an email, and I'll send you over the slides. Um, the next, the, the in terms of upcoming webinars uh, left over for June, we have one more to go, and that's the importance of a trading plan. And that's at the same time, guys. That's uh, 5 p.m. GMT. Also, look, do make sure to register for our uh, FP Markets Telegram channel to get instant updates. The sign up tab can be found at the, I believe it's at the lower left part of the FP Markets website, or alternatively, click on the link in the chat box. Um, also, look, as you can see in the, um, in the chat box, we also have the, uh, uh, the, the webinars for our, uh, for July. Uh, as you can see, basic chart patterns, the MACD, how to interpret uh, the MACD and apply it to charts, and the Quasimodo formation. Now, do be around for the Quasimodo formation. It's a fantastic way of uh, determining support and resistance. Um, look, I don't see any more questions, guys. So um, I think I'm going to wrap things up here. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening for most of you to attend this presentation um i, I guess it's evening where you where you guys are located uh, i really really do hope you took something from it i know i've confused some of you um but i do encourage you again to watch the uh, recording and then really really please do send me over any questions you have to market analyst at fpmarkets.com and i'll happily help you clear up any confusion because i do know how confusing position sizing is and it gets even more confusing when you start searching through the internet and they just give you one example and then you're left, you know, basically guessing. So please do um, go through this again. It's worth it. It really, truly is. So look, um, just one final check to see if there's any questions. Nope. Okay. So look on that day, on that note, have a great evening and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you very much.